Welcome to Let's Get Sports Prediction episode. I'm Brandon. I'm not sure I'm ready for this game. Perna, can somebody please help me get ready? But I'm not sure if the players are really ready for this. We're ready. We're ready to go out there and hit them every play right now, baby. Oh, yeah, now I'm ready. Yeah. And hit them. Uh. How does he do that to his voice? This is Broncos vs. Raiders. Full preview, prediction, forecast, breakdown, matchup, splash up, sit on it until it feels right football episode. That's good sports. This episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. Download the SeatGeek app with the link in the description. Use my promo code, that's good. All one word and you're gonna get $20 off your first ticket order. You want to buy tickets to the Broncos Raiders game? You can still do that with my promo code. Or if you're not a football fan watching a football video for some reason, you can get comedy tickets, concert tickets, whatever the hell you want. SeatGeek ranks their ticket prices so you know if you're getting a good deal, you can preview your seat before you buy it. And don't forget, promo code that's good, $20 first order for you. Right away, the Broncos do get a half point for home field advantage, even though CJ Anderson's mom and family will be in the stadium rooting for the Raiders. She said she's not rooting for her son. That's crazy. And as a present, I hope CJ gives his mom three Broncos touchdowns, 150 rushing yards, like a real good son. Vance Joseph versus Jack Del Taco. Neither coach had their team ready last week. Every decision gets magnified in a loss, and I still hate the fake punt call. Even after Vance's explanation this week, he said they liked the look the Bills had, but Buffalo caught on to the fake punt because the Broncos had a personnel issue on that play. Well, if you see them catching on to it, call a timeout, punt the ball, and spit out the fucking gum. So, Jack Del Rio, you get 0.25 advantage but it's mostly as a punishment to Vance. In fact, I should give you negative 10 points, Jack, for this autographed picture I found of you in a New Orleans cigar shop. Thanks, I enjoyed the cigar. I have no personality to speak of. Thanks, I appreciate that you are making fun of me. Thanks, that orgasm you gave me was of medium standards. I'm Jack Del Rio, thanks. Derek Carr and ball catchers versus no fly, zone, zone. Guess who grew wings and thinks he can fly over the no-fly zone? Not Amari Cooper, Derek Carr. I, need a bank I, can trust. I don't trust Carr as an NFL quarterback, but I will listen to his banking advice all day long. Bought a home at a great rate. Carr, help me get a good compounded interest rate on my investments. Carr is playing all right. Like Simeon, he has six passing TDs, but only two picks. Uh, but he has thrown for 100 fewer yards than Trevor. But he's only been sacked six times instead of nine and is completing 70% of his passes. So, so maybe he's doing better than all right. And the Raiders passing game is just waiting to take off. Yeah, that's a segue to saying the no-fly zone will ground Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper and tight end Jared Cook. None of them are taking off. At a great rate. Jared Cook is the second leading receiver for the Raiders right now in terms of yards this season, behind only Crabtree. So if these talented ball men want to break out, it will probably have to wait until next week. The only things I see breaking are more chains. Look, the no-fly zone got caught out of position a few times against Buffalo. I mean, they gave up a whopping 213 yards to Tyrod Taylor. Oh my God, the sky is fucking falling. But with the Raiders coming to town, I think it's safe to say the no-fly zone Got my swagger back! Oh! 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 Aqib Tlaib, breaker of chains, gonna have a game. I feel it. Plus, it looks like rookie corner Brendan Langley is healthy, which is good news because Bradley Roby has been limited in practice this week with an ankle injury. The no-fly zone should return to full form, dropping cars transmission like Crabtree drops balls. At a great rate. 0.25 for the Broncos. Beast mode in O-line versus Broncos front seven. Todd Davis is currently ranked as the best 
run-stopping linebacker in the NFL. I'd say the 83 rushing yards that have been accumulated by Melvin Gordon, Ezekiel Elliott, and LaShawn McCoy, and their average of two yards per carry would back that up. I's a fine motherfucker who just backed that stat up. Juvenile. It's been a tough adjustment for Brandon Marshall, but his new role on the defense is happy guy number one. Denver is giving up a league low of 59.7 rushing yards per game. This front seven is monstrous. Opposing backs can't even get to the line of scrimmage before getting smashed, especially in the bedroom. Why? Before the season started, I would have definitely thought the Raiders had the advantage here. Why? I mean, beast mode behind one of the best lines in football should have been a no-brainer. Why? This is another big test for the Broncos up front. Marshawn Lynch thrives in these situations, but beast mode has never faced the Tasmanian devil, Adam Gotsis, who eats beasts as a part of a balanced breakfast. The Raiders line is still good, but the right side with Marshall Newhouse, more like Millhouse and Gabe Jackson, don't have favorable matchups, in my opinion, against Derek Wolf and Von Miller. Gotsis and Shaq Barrett will see their stiffest competition since their off-season training program at the morgue. <laughs> Facing Donald Penn and Kalichi Osamele. Oakland has been a middle-of-the-road rushing offense. Denver has been the best run defense. Half point here for the Broncos. You didn't know we came! That's what she said. Special teams versus special teams. Brandon McManus was perfect last week. Three of three, down the gooch. But the Broncos lost. Isaiah McKenzie looks primed. Primed like an oil pump ready to burst into the end zone. Cody Latimer is dealing with some sort of knee issue, which is news because he's an important special teamer. However, expect Brendan Langley to take over as the kick returner if Cody is a no-go. You should know Janikowski is on IR, but take note because the Italian kicking stallion, Giorgio Tavecchio, has been perfect this season on six attempts with two of those over 50 yards. No advantage here, but I'd like to see a little more denim. Bash and gash and O-line versus Raiders front seven. CJ Anderson has a 43% breakaway percentage, which ranks number five in 2017, according to Pro Football Focus. Cool, what the fuck does that mean? It means that Anderson has picked up 43% of his yards on runs of 15 yards or more because some fucking nerd is keeping track of that stat somewhere. Garrett Bowles, Matt, take me down to the paradise city where the grass is, greens, and I block on it. And Ronald Leary are all playing well. Max Garcia has been good in run blocking situations, but struggled in pass protection. And Minelik Watson has had a rough go around, all around. However, I thought he looked better against Buffalo and believe in his first two starts, he faced Demarcus Lawrence and Melvin Ingram, arguably two of the most effective pass rushers so far this season. The problem is, Watson gets Khalil Mack this week. Is he struggling, or is he just getting screwed by facing the best every fucking week? It's probably a mix of both, but hopefully a trial by fire makes him ice the pass rushers soon. That's why you come here, for stupid that. Like Vaughn, Mack is a great pass rusher, a great run defender, and can sneakily drop into coverage from time to time and not look like an embarrassment, which is hard to do as a Raider. There's no way around it. Mack is going to be a problem all day for Menelik Watson. However, after running back Chris Thompson put up 150 receiving yards against the Raiders last week, I think Bash and Gash you didn't know we can. can have success running and screening their way through that loose open Oakland front seven. The Raiders are giving up 112.3 rush yards per game. Denver will get back to running, not having Simeon throw over 40 times, but Khalil Mack, Bruce Irvin will disrupt the passing game. This matchup is a wash. <laughs> Zero points. Trevor Simeon and ball catchers versus Raiders secondary, second to none. More like second to being 22nd, because they're currently ranked 23rd in pass yards allowed per game. Here's how I would classify the Raiders secondary. Not great, but not bad. I think strong safety Carl Joseph is very talented, easily a top 10 safety in the league right now. The rest of the guys, Amerson, Conley, Carey, and Nelson, uh, they're not giving receivers nightmares, but they're also not giving them 
fun dreams. The other guys not giving teams nightmares are the Denver pass catchers. DT does have five catches to go over 20 yards this season, which puts him in a six-way tie with guys like Antonio Brown, Stephon Diggs, and Brandon Cooks. But trust me, a six-way is never as fun as it sounds. The Broncos' tight ends are good for about two catches a game right now, and Benny Fowler uh, has emerged as a pretty reliable third receiver. I'm not knocking the ball-catching core. I think this is a result of having a young QB and a running game that was very good the first two weeks. What I am saying right now is I don't see the passing game Game as a big advantage for the Broncos. I know Simeon had a bad week, well, a bad second half in Buffalo, but Derek Carr didn't have a great day against Washington either. I mean, just look at his big time throw percentage. 1.2% versus Simeon's at 7.5%? Holy shit, that's like seven times better. Do I know what it means? Nope. Do I give a shit? No. All it means to me is Simeon is 6.3% more likely to make a big time throw. You didn't know he came! Which directly increases his chances by 38.9% to win a Big Dick Player Award. Stats, 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 numbers, numbers, numbers. What does it do? If Simeon gets some time to throw the football, I think he can be good, but he probably won't. But I'm gonna give him an advantage here. 0.25 for the Broncos. There's the final score. Advantage Broncos. Yeah, I'm showing little respect on Raiders Week. Every time I get cocky, it bites me in the ass on this show, but I'm tired of being a pussy. And I'd rather be cocky and have my ass bitten than be logical this week. Honestly, neither of these teams have done anything this season to separate themselves. This game, this game will do that, and it is up for grabs. Last year, the Raiders were better. This year, we don't know yet. It's week four and the true identities of football teams, it's about to start to show. The Broncos win this one, 30 to 20, and I'm giving the Broncos another 10 point advantage because they have me. You didn't know we came! Crushing the user generated football review game on YouTube. I feel the animosity every time we play y'all. Even if I even see the Broncos play somebody up, I'm hate. Watts Raiders ain't got shit on me. Although I respect the hell out of anyone dedicated to making videos on YouTube. Keep it up, Watts Raiders. But you ain't got shit on me. Go Broncos! Woo, 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 woo! Somebody suggested I try to hype people up more before the games, and that's what I'm doing. And this wouldn't be possible without my Patreon supporters. Big dick shout outs to Brett Harris, Samir Micah, Daniel Logan, Patrick Levang, and Caitlin Sweetapple. This is my job, everyone. I don't do anything else because I'm stupid. So please consider funding my stupidity with a monthly donation, and you will be rewarded with full access to all the in-depth game reviews that made this channel almost successful. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good. Sports or Broncos, whatever. It's the same fucking show, really. Time to see what the Broncos are made of. Hopefully nails, steel, muscles, erections, testosterone, and lawnmowers, anything manly.